Hello everyone working from home. Before we begin, I want to be very clear. This is not going to be a quick, concise tutorial. The video that is going to follow is merely a presentation that I gave to my fellow editors at my company, uh, and there's it has not been edited at all. There were technical difficulties. They were talking over Discord and asking questions. Um, you know, I made some mistakes and then had to correct them. So what you're about to watch is not like a video that I've made for my channel or anything like that. Like it's it's just a presentation um, raw. Uh, but before we begin, I will be going over OBS settings so that, you know, the, the footage that you may want to use to do this workflow matches what we use. Um, so let's do that right now. All right, so before we begin, I wanna be clear, I'm not gonna be going over how to set up OBS. There's a bajillion videos on that. And the other thing I won't be going over is how to set up voice meter. Um, now voice meter is a program that basically splits all your audio sources into separate tracks. Uh, and the only reason we need this is so that we can separate Discord from gameplay audio. Um, if you don't need to do that, if you somehow get Discord to not play over your desktop and it plays in a different channel, don't worry about voice meter. But if you do have that issue and Discord and gameplay is showing up in the same track in your recordings, then you'll need to set up voice meter. Uh, but once again, there's dozens of tutorials on how to do that. So go watch those and come back. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that the canvas I'm recording in is twice the width that it normally is. Um, the reason we do that is so that we can get full screen webcam as well as full screen gameplay. If the webcam is up in the corner, you're gonna have an issue with one, the gameplay being blocked and you know, a lot of stuff comes up in corners. And also, if you have someone talking and the gameplay is irrelevant, you're gonna have to zoom in on this tiny little webcam and it'll look like shit. So, pardon my French, uh, that's why we do this. Now, in the settings, to get that perspective or that resolution, you're going to go to video, base canvas resolution 3840x1080, and the same for output, 3840x1080. I would also recommend recording at 60 frames because that's pretty much how fast uh, games run at. Next thing you're going to do is going to go to output, recording, and make sure that four audio tracks are checked. I'm going to explain why in a second. Just make sure that that is the case. Little tip, if you want to record an MKV, it's great because if OBS were to crash, um, instead of getting a corrupted recording file, like what would happen with MP4, uh, you can still remux this MKV in it, and you'll get all of the recording up until the crash. With MP4, you just lose all the footage. Now, uh, once you have all your audio tracks in here, your microphone and your desktop and with voice meter, Discord, its own thing, you're gonna want to click on a gear and go advanced audio properties. Um, now we have the desktop, Discord and microphone here. You don't have to worry about the rest. Don't worry about all these. You know, I personally have Spotify on its own track, totally unnecessary. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that everything in track one is checked. This is going to be a mix track. Um, and then in track two, the only thing you want checked is your desktop or gameplay audio. And then in track three, you're going to want just your microphone. And then in track four, you're going to want just Discord. Now, what this is going to do is when you record, you're going to get a double wide video file with four audio tracks. The first track being a mix, the second being your desktop gameplay, third being your microphone, fourth being Discord. Um, and the reason we do a mix on track one is because when you're streaming, you can only select one audio track. So by having a mix, we don't have to go changing our settings every time we want to record and or stream. If you didn't do it with the mix, you know, you would either be streaming with just your microphone and no gameplay, 
Uh, or you'd have to change your settings back and forth, be checking things and everything like that. You don't want that. Now with these settings, you should have identical media as to what I use in the presentation you're about to see. So enjoy, let's do this. All right, hello. Uh, this is a how-to walkthrough on the double wide multicam workflow. Um, so first things first, you import your video assets will now have the audio embedded, uh, at least while we're doing work from home. Um, and first thing you want to do before anything else, and we're pro like, probably not going to do this in the demo, uh, but the earlier you can get proxies made, the better. So I usually do it right when I import before I do anything. Um, now, if you have Adobe Premiere 2020, you can switch to QuickTime and select ProRes low resolution proxy. That seems to be a very stable one. Uh, or I've read that Cineform low res proxy is less intensive on the CPU, but it's a much larger file because basically the way proxies work is they're uncompressed. So they're gonna be huge files, but they play back much easier. Um, so you just select those files, select your encoder and then click okay. And it'll make those. Um, and then once you're done, we can get started on assembly. Uh, so generally, I do it in order of seniority. So um, <laughs> we got James and then Lana and then Lindsay didn't name herself her file, but I think we just name it here and then import it. Yeah, the name's there. If you name it after you import it, it won't update. Um, that's here. And then me, little old me. Um, so the first things first, you're gonna strip down all the audio files to just what you need. And that's going to be just gameplay and vocals for each person. So the way it should work, uh, and now we have everyone sending four tracks of audio. This was before that happened, but it really won't matter uh, if you get a three track or a, or a four track because it's basically the same. So track one is the mix and you don't need that. So we can uh, select that and delete it. Um, and then also track four, which is the discord. So if you want to make things easier, we can basically put uh, you can drag these down and put a row between everyone so you don't get confused of whose audio is whose. Uh, so basically, something just fell over on my desk. Uh, one, two, three, four. Um, so James, we're good. Um, Alana, we're going to hold Alt and then click tracks one and... F oh, sorry, Alt and Shift. Click tracks one and four that... Basically, holding Alt ignores linking. Um, and then tracks one and four for here. Alt Shift, click tracks one and four, delete. One and four. I, I have a, uh, a question. Go for it. Um, so, do you. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm actually. Uh, it, it's interesting that you delete, just straight deleted those. You, do, are those not at all good for. for Syncing to uh, or just a, if as a refer as a reference file. If you find that people didn't do a clap sync, um, the Discord is a great backup because it basically has everyone else's voices. So you can uh it's a great for a backup, the Discord is. Um but I know that in this one everyone clapped, so it, it doesn't matter. Um that's something I guess that when you bring them in you can basically scrub through the start and see if people clap. And if they don't, then you can keep one person's discord and just line up everyone's voice to that. Um, okay. But yeah. Cause, cause by definition are the, are the discords all sunk up together or, or is there fluctuation in them depending on their whatever? They're all, they're all basically sunk up. That is something we'll go over later, which is that there's a delay in discord. So after yeah, okay. we sync everything, we're going to bump everyone over, but we're, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So okay, we have gameplay, just gameplay and vocals for everybody. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to select all 
and then clear space for tracks one through four. So just bump them down um, so that we have space. And what we're going to do is we're going to put our gameplay here. Um, and this is just temporary, so don't worry about how you do it and your edit and everything. This is just for building the... Uh, just for building the, um, sorry, Slack, close Slack. Just for building the multicam, so don't worry about it. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna select everything, we're gonna press Control L. This unlinks all files. Um, so you can see now I'm clicking on them and they're all just separate. So then we're gonna go video by video and just take the gameplay track, which should be the smaller one. Um, oh, it looks like Alana's or Lindsay's might be switched. Let's just double check here by soloing. Yeah, so uh, Lindsay has her track set wrong, uh, but that's okay. You gotta use your detective eyes. Um, so we're gonna drag them up one, two, three, four, corresponding. With the people one two three four video tracks so now we should have a one two three and four b one two three four with the gameplay in the video so then we're just going to select each one and relink those Oop. And there we go. We have uh, basically everything isolated now. Um, separated the, the audio tracks and the video tracks. This is basically, we've got it now back to how you would receive it uh, in the old ways where we had the, the mixer and then the individual uh, gameplay. So we've now basically reset to zero. Um, and now what we're going to do is we are going to – uh-oh. We got another weird track. Let me see what I did wrong. Um, looks like I might have taken James's Discord. Sounds disastrous. Probably. Yep. All right. So if you ever do something wrong here, all you got to do, um, you can select – the video that you did wrong um what is it called i have it set to a hotkey match frame you go you select the video you sequence match frame and then it opens up in the source and then you can just drag the audio in and then select the correct file uh, which is track one yeah, this is back before we streamlined everything. It should all be much simpler. Everything should be the same. All right, so now we have it correct. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to find the clap points for the video and the audio separately. Um, so I'm just going to scrub here. And once again, this is way easier when the proxies are on scrub around actually let me rephrase that um sometimes the proxies will freeze up and there will be like 15 frames of the same so i like to find the general area turn the proxy off and then uh scrub to the exact frame. these large ass video files man um I think maybe this is also because I'm recording and streaming, so it's taking up a uh, CPU power. All right, there we go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut there, cut, and then hide this window. Cut. Boom. Hide this window. I think it might have froze. Oh, froze. Froze what? 
you froze for a minute, at least on my end, but then and it the appears back. fresh. Okay, well, basically what I did was I just went video by video, finding the point where the actual clap occurs, and then yeah. I put a cut right on that frame. Last... That doesn't look 100%. Um, this might freeze it up because I'm streaming, recording, and doing Premiere, which is heavy on the system. Um, yeah, normally it's the other way around. When you're not streaming and recording, turning off the proxies should show you all the frames. Um, Yeah, I don't know if it's, yeah, so basically, like, in the proxy, I don't know if you saw that, it was skipping, like, a buttload of frames. So you generally, you want to find the general area, and then turn off proxies, and find the actual literal frame the clap happens on. Let me just double check these other ones. Me recording. Yeah, my premiere is freezing up now too. Just for the sake of uh, presentation, let's just pretend that I what that I was turning the proxies off and finding the exact frame, because um, I know that this. Sorry about that, y'all. I don't have the strongest computer in the world. Uh, so then what you're going to do, once you have it cut on the visual clap of every video, you're then going to go into the vocal track and find the clap in the vocal track and do the same thing where we're going to cut and delete the part before. Um, usually it's pretty easy to find. Um, All right, so does everyone have both their videos and audios cut on the tracks? Mm hmm Okay. Then what you're going to do is you're just going to line them all up, every single one. And you will want to zoom in uh, to the frame just to make sure. Sometimes they'll be off by one frame. And Are you just dragging and dropping, or is that a hot key you just... No, I'm just clicking oh. and dragging them over. Click and drag. Um, if anyone knows a hot key that, to move a video track to where it is... That would be great because then you could just literally probably select all of them and then press the hotkey and they'll all line up. But I'm not aware of one. I know there's one in After Effects, but not here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go all the way to the end and do the exact same thing with both video and audio. Oop. And once again, what you want to do is you want to turn, you want to find the general area of the clap, and then turn off proxies, because proxies tend to skip frames, and you want to find the exact frame that the clap is on. Um, but because I'm streaming and recording, I can't do that without my computer. 
hitting it. Um, and sometimes, I mean, I'm sure you guys are uh, so I'm just doing a video. Sometimes the clap or the, the point will fall in between two frames. You just want to do it the one that's closer. So you can see that the peak is just a little bit to the right of center. So I'm going to actually put the, the thing after. Does everyone have everything cut at the end? Alrighty then. I'll <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so then what you want to do is you want to go to the general middle of everything. Um, this We're going to rate stretch everything to the same point. And the reason we want to go to the middle is so that we don't, like if we were over here, we'd be stretching these none and stretching these ones a, a lot. So by going to the middle, you stretch everything else. That makes sense. Uh, and you're just literally going to go clip by clip and rate stretch with the rate stretch tool. I don't know if any of y'all are everyone's aware of this. I didn't know about it for the first like two years I worked at Funhouse. Um, it's the rate stretch tool. You can just click and drag on the end, stretch it out. Do the same with the vocal tracks. Oh yeah, and by the way, something if you wanted, um, you could, uh, you could select the vocal tracks, right click them, you label what is it, Caribbean, that you get that separate visual. Um, and then you should have synced vocals with the webcam. Um, and the reason we do it this way. And I'm sure some of you have noticed is that the way OBS records audio and video is dependent upon each computer's CPU and processing power. So basically, no matter whose computer it is, the video and the microphone will be off by a certain amount of frames. Some people it's off by four frames, other it's off by eight. So that is why we separate the audio from the video and we resync them because they're all basically off by a certain amount of frames and it's all different depending on someone's um so basically now that we have this synced um what i like to do because generally with these work from homes there's very little banter before the clap usually we'll just click start record and then clap almost immediately <laughs> I just like to do my multicam here, but if there is a bunch of banter, all you got to do is just at, once you've done the rate stretching, you just you can just drag them out, drag them out again. Um, but I'm not going to do this for this one because there was no banter before the clap, um, and I like it clean, clean start. Um, so now what we're going to do before we make the multicam. Um, you want to figure out who did the countdown. I know general, usually it's James, but you just want to check that. Um, and as we talked about earlier, there is a delay in discord. Um, it's about 400 milliseconds, which is four tenths of a second. And since we're doing 60 frames, uh, we can just do 64 times 4 slash 10, and we know that's 24 frames. So basically, everyone is hearing James 24 frames later than he's actually speaking. And generally, this doesn't really matter. Um, I found it only really matters with Adam because his reflexes are so fast. Um, if you don't compensate for the delay... Um, he'll react before stuff actually happens. Um, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to select everyone except the person who claps and just on your numpad or, um, 
uh, I guess Ryan doesn't have a numpad. Uh, you can just you just want to bump it over 24 frames. Um, if you have a numpad, you can just press plus on the numpad, do four, enter, and it will move it over 24. Um, oh yeah, so this is something that I want to look into, but for some reason, even though we're recording in 60 frames, non-drop, it's still treating it. I don't know if you can see there's semicolons. Um, and that's really annoying because it will actually treat frames differently. So what I do, I mean, this is all you have to do, and it's like it knows it's wrong. You right-click on the sequence, go to sequence settings, and then just click OK. And yeah, for some reason, it's all fucking weird. And the semicolons will change to colons. That's something I'm going to oh, look into. Wow. Yeah. Um, it's really weird. Uh, don't worry about this stuff. This is just because of the right stretching. Um, so now that we have everything synced up and we're compensating for Discord, we're just going to make the multicam. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all the video, which will include the gameplay audio. We're going to right click and do nest. And then let's name it multicam, or actually, sorry, cancel, getting ahead of myself. Right before we do this, and this is also something you can do after if you want, you just would have to do it to multiple sequences. You're going to right click sequence settings and then change it from a double wide to a single. So 1920. And once again, that's something that you can do um, after you make the multicams. You just have to change those sequence settings in multiple uh, sequences. Um, also, just, you know, organizational, it doesn't really matter for this, but I'm just going to name this uh, Fallout 76 YTV1 and then put it in my cuts folder. Um, so yeah, select all of the videos and it should, if you have them linked, should select the game audio as well. Right click nest and we're going to name it multicam game and you want to start with the gameplay. Um, and then immediately after doing that, we're going to delete all of the game audio. And then this new sequence that got made up here, we're going to click and drag it and replace it to the frame uh, of the nest that we just made. And the reason we do that is because when you nest something, it doesn't include the sequence audio for some reason. It makes a sequence with the video, but it keeps the original audio. We want the audio track from the sequence, not the raw audio. That's why we replace that. Um, and then what we'll do right click multicam enable now if you go into multicam view you'll see that we have a multicam and it's just with a normal sequence it's awesome um, um uh, hey real quick is anyone else's mixer screen frozen with john for long periods of time uh not mine not yours yeah my Mine's struggling a little bit, but my internet is really trashy right now. Oh, uh, yeah, it might be a Wi-Fi thing, actually, right? Yeah, mine's smooth, but I'm plugged in LAN, and my yeah, internet same. seems oh, yeah, to be good same. today. Right, okay. you might, you might want to click on, on the gear on the bottom and maybe just drop the resolution down a little bit, although it will, it yeah, will be that's harder, a good idea. harder to see stuff. No, it, it just, yeah, it, that last thing you said seemed useful, but I didn't really... Which one was, close. which okay. thing? The thing about the the right click or the uh, nesting and enabling. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so okay. We'll yeah. Just... I, yeah. This is way better actually right now. So going like butter. So you select all the files, all of the okay. all of the video and gameplay audio, not the vocal audio. Okay. Right click, nest, name it, multicam game. Okay. And then delete the audio that we just selected. Because it's already nested in Yeah, the... so yeah, we want the nested audio. So you're gonna delete that and then bring that sequence, that nested sequence that we just made, drag it back in and replace it 
on the frame with the nest that we just made. And that will bring in that nested audio, which is what we want. Got it. And, 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 and by default, is it the kind of where uh, every, if you change it, it'll, it'll change, uh, it'll give you the audio of whatever track is? Yeah, being... so the way we do that is we then right-click, multicam, enable. And what that does is that just takes a normal sequence and it converts it, it treats it as a multicam in this sequence. You can see we still, we can open it up like a normal sequence. Mm -hmm. Um but it is being treated as a multi-cam sequence in this uh, project you can see here. What, what does that mean exactly? It means that it's still a normal sequence. I don't know if you've ever done the thing where you select the files and then you do um, create multi-cam source sequence. That's usually what I do, yeah. yeah. So with that, you can't just double click it and open it in the timeline. You have to like right click it and do open in timeline open. or whatever. This way, right. it's just a simpler step where it's just a normal sequence. Um, and it's just being treated as a multicam because we enabled it as a multicam. But and do I have to have it in that view, though, that you have? Like, you uh, multi like view? right now, there's, yeah, the multicam no, view, or is that just, just a just setting you have? Toggle. You just toggle it on and off. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, so for multicam game, this is the one you want to do first. Um, just go open your effects controls um, and just change the position to um, if the webcam's on the left, the gameplay is on the right, you're going to change the position to zero. Uh, and then just making sure, I think everybody except Adam puts their webcam on the left. So, um, zero, zero. Something you want to remember is to toggle these visibilities back on because the multicam will remember that. If you ever go to your master sequence and you're like, only one of my cameras is showing up in the multicam, that's because you probably made them invisible in that sequence. Um, so then what we're gonna do is we are going to duplicate the sequence and then name it multicam webcam. And then we're gonna open that sequence and just change the position of everything from zero to 1920. I mean, that will bump everything over so that it's all webcam. Um, and then something I like to do just for cleanliness is I like to alt click and drag and delete all the audio from this one because it's not needed this is just uh, a webcam uh, and then once we've done that you can click and drag the webcam and line it up with the game um, and then alt click that nested audio delete that because you don't want that and then just do the same thing like we did with the gameplay. Right click webcam, go to multicam, and enable it. So now, if you go to single cam view, you should have a multicam sequence. With everybody's. Oops. Everybody's different tracks in their webcams. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, I, I I have a question, real quick. Yep. Um, if hi hypothetically, if you don't enable it at the multicam enable, what 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 happens? What is it as? What? If you that, that if you don't do that one step, the where you go, it's click just on a, it, it's right just click. a normal sequence. So it will only show you. The stuff on the top video track it won't show any of the other uh, tracks ah uh, and, and you won't you won't be able to uh change it like yeah you won't be able to it. use okay. the multiple cameras um so if you do watch in the multicam view um something that i like doing is um alt click and drag the video or alt click and drag select the video so you're not selecting the audio 
and then alt click and drag that stuff up to duplicate it all uh, and then switch those over um, to the webcam one thing you can also do is if you just enter the position in one and then you click on motion and control C you can then just select the others and control paste and it will reposition all um, that that uh, that that awesome thing you just did, where you cloned everything by click. What, what, what are you holding for that? Alt. Or are you 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 duplicate? If you have multiple so you just... things selected, you hold Alt. I don't know what it is on Mac. Okay. You hold Alt and you click and drag, and it will just duplicate wow. everything. You didn't know about that? No, that's great, yep, son. Okay. Um, so with this, you'll see it's like, oh shit, they're all not lined up. All you gotta do is add four more video tracks so that there's 12 video tracks. And then in your multicam view, in your multicam view, you have all four gameplay tracks with the webcams lined up. So this is how I like to watch gameplays down. And I basically have it in this view for my initial watch down, my cut down, my cut to time. I literally only on my final pass do I actually go into the single cam and do camera work. Um, so that's it for the basic syncing. There are a few more things um, just for ease of use uh, that I'd like to go over if, if y'all are down. Um, can, can, can I ask a question? Yeah, about yeah, go the, for that it. Thing that's the, I guess that's the first thing. It doesn't even have any um, questions. The, 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 th so uh, that one sequence, that Nessa sequence that has like a million things in it. Um, uh, it's eight things, but go on. Eight, yeah, eight things. So, so basically you're going to cut, like, 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 you, like what you would do is you would cut everything. And then you, uh, when, you, when you get ready to do your last pass, then would you go back into this sequence and get rid of those? No, because is that what you're saying? if you're just using tracks one through four, uh -huh. um, you're never going to interact with these duped uh, webcams because these are so that's these just are for you to camera. reference in that, that is view. that is literally just so that when you're watching it you can see people's webcams in their gameplay at the same time because if we didn't do that if we just if we had these blanked out watching it in multicam view all you're seeing is just the gameplay you're not seeing people's faces you're not seeing if they make a funny face or anything like that yeah you know, if they're laughing or anything so i just like having this so that when I'm watching it down and I'm cutting, I see literally everything that I have to work with. Um, all you know, all of my resources basically are here, and I'm and I'm seeing them all. If that makes and, sense. And then and then what, yeah, no, that totally makes sense. And, and and when you're cutting it though, and then changing things, like like could you make a couple cuts and then just change it like you would normally. And yeah. Then, so uh, what I do because I know that a lot of people will you know they'll cut cut click, drag, delete, and then close it. That is like way too many steps for me. Um, what I do is I have in and out set to E and R, and I just go in. Well, you have to have all the tracks selected, but that's only, you only gotta do that once. Um, I go in, out, extract. Um, and I have extract set to X, and then lift set to Z. So it's just, it's just three buttons. Or I guess in a click. So you just go in, out, and either lift, which leaves an opening if you want to move stuff around. Or if you're just bumping it, if you just want to bump it over, you just extract, boom. And it, it deletes it and it bumps it over in the same thing. So, and the name of those hotkeys are extract. So it's, it's like mark in, let's see, what is it? Um, mark in, mark out. And then it's lift and extract. So yeah, if you're not moving things around individually and doing something fancy, if you're just cutting stuff out, I highly recommend in out extract because it is so much faster than like, you know, doing that and then selecting everything, deleting it and then pumping it over. That's what I did for years and years until I assistant edited, uh, and someone taught me that, and I was like, holy shit, that's way faster. Yeah, it's just Yeah, e. that's awesome. And then, I, yeah, I rebound it, because I think it's normally I-O, and then, like, 
comma and period and it's like in weird places i have it e r for in and out and then z and x for either lift or extract um so it's just super um, fast yeah awesome can, 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 can you just make like maybe like two cuts but then change the cameras so that i can yeah. see what that looks like in so your like, workflow um you know say we have a bunch of cuts here um oh sorry let me that because i was showing you guys the other thing you want to make make sure these are lined up when you're initially going through that they're both camera one uh actually it doesn't really matter because uh so we got a bunch of cuts here boop boop, boop. um i think uh no sometimes it okay there we go now it's working um all you have to do you just have on your you know on your keyboard one two three and four you just go here and you want i want alana actually let's turn off the multi well yeah that's kind of my question is when you have the multi cam view on or so are you toggling that on and off when you're no no, no that I'm, ju I'm just doing that to show you um like literally we could watch this and we could go one and we go this one two this one three this one four and then when you leave the multicam view oh well i didn't i we're skipping steps here ryan so i'm uh but so as you can see even when I was in the multicam view, I was just hitting my numbers and it was changing both of the both of the tracks. One thing where that won't work is if you have track selected, um, you can see even though my cursor's over this track, it's changing these cameras because these are selected mm -hmm. and therefore they take seem like priority or whatever. Um, but before before we uh rip, 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 rip. Um, well, um, yeah, so yeah, Ryan, yeah, yeah, I was just saying, like, uh, the main because I get what you just did, I, I guess, just while you're in multi cam view, what looking at everything, mm -hmm. then to, to see your work that you just did, if you make it two or three cuts. You will take. You will get out of multi view cam. Sorry, everyone, if this I mean, is really if basic you wanna, if uh, you questions. Wanna, if you want to see literally what it looks like, yeah. But if if you know, if you already have, so let let me just let me just do a few more steps, which which, and then and then we can address it because it's it's down the road. Um, yeah, I'm really just wondering what your process. Yeah. yeah okay. So yeah, continue. Let's rewind. Right when we finished creating. Uh, these multicams and getting them all lined up and then we added these multiple cameras for viewing pleasure um, The next thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna select your webcam um, And you know everyone can have their own preference what I like to do because Sometimes people's what you know everyone has their webcams in a different place. Not everyone is centered um, you can see you know, if we go down here, um, Alana is kind of low. Lindsay is like over to the right and down. Um, I am OCD, so I actually I like try to center myself as much as possible. James is also fairly centered. Um, but what I like to do uh, is I like to go into the webcam and just kind of frame everybody up. Um, and because it's in this multicam, you only have to do it once. You don't have to do it to a bunch of clips. You only have to do it to the master file. So I'll bump, I bump Lindsay up a little bit and then move her up. And you can turn on a safe margins here. So you can see where the center is. Um, and then, uh, same thing with Alana. I'll bump her up. By the way, Alana's footage is all fucked. Um, we have, we have resolved that issue. Uh, so it shouldn't be on videos moving. I'm even going to scale myself up just a little bit so that I'm relatively the same size as everyone. James, I think, is a little tighter. James is, James is basically perfect. Um, <laughs> actually, yeah, yeah, because sometimes he leans, but he's generally in the middle. Um, so now we have everyone basically framed up the same, mostly. Um, but also, I feel, and this is a personal preference, but I feel like there's so much empty space on the sides with it being widescreen 
I prefer for to do a more four by three aspect for the webcam. So I have this preset made. This is another thing. Since all of this stuff is standardized, how we're doing it all, if you make presets, you don't have to manually do a bunch of shit. You can just click and drag. You're not having to be entering positions or anything ever. Um, it's wonderful. Um, so with the webcam selected, I have this preset called webcam corner and it drags it up to the corner. And then I also have a thing called webcam corner crop, which I add. And you can see that it, um, I'll show you guys those dimensions in a second, but you can see that it basically puts it in the corner and it adds a little crop. So it takes out some of that white space on the sides. Um, so the dimensions for that, um, the is position one seven four zero one three five scale twenty five um and then for the crop it is both left and right twelve point five percent um and if you want if you wanted to do uh the widescreen you just wouldn't have the crop and I think it would be what is it it's not 14 16 yeah 1680 i'm a fucking nerd um i did the math in my head <laughs> um so but i like doing uh i like doing this crop and then what i have is i have one called webcam full which all that actually is is just default settings but instead of having to manually enter them I just click and drag this preset down and boom, it makes it full screen. But if you're doing this four by three thing, it is an extra step that you have to toggle the crop off so that there's not the, the sides. You know, that's totally a personal preference. It does hey, add a few John, more steps. I've got a question here. Yes. Yes, go for it. Um, so when you, when you are going to do like a full, say you want to James, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go for it. yeah we can hear you. Am I like delayed or something? Nope. Nope. Go for it. You sound fine. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. We, so when you say you want James or no, I've got some sort of weird delay. Are you going hearing on. yourself or something? Anyway, I'll ask the question then get a delay. Are you um, hearing so yourself? So go to no, no. But everybody's re re everybody's reacting to my question like ten seconds later, which is really strange. Just monologue it. Where. Dan, what's your question? Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, I just <laughs> I keep getting answers when I'm doing this. <laughs> God damn it! Uh, so say you, mean... you reframe somebody up, and you want to do a full frame on them. Uh -huh. Oh my god! Sorry. <laughs> just go on. What, what happens sorry. when they're cut? You've like crop cropped off the sides of them, and you've done a full frame on it. But so how do you get the full resolution back after you've pushed in on their head and cropped off the side of it? Um, you don't, uh, with, with the, with these high res videos okay. going up, going up to like 110% or even like 115, 120, you're not losing really any noticeable quality. Um, so I just frame people up, like frame people up and then I leave it like that. I make sure not to go over like 120%, but usually it's just like 110 oh, yeah. and you're bumping them over and you're not really going to lose much quality um all right yeah. i just didn't know if there was a way to completely undo that real quickly but it's fine yeah um yeah so uh yeah i highly suggest presets because you know all you got to do is just click and drag to get pe take people put them up in the corner or make them full screen and then with the crop it's just clicking on this little fx button to toggle it on and off you know, I know, I know most people probably don't even want to do this four by three thing. That's totally fine. That's just my personal preference. I think it looks better. Um, so now, um, one other thing, uh, is I can just give you guys some coordinates. Um, with the crop turned off, um, one fourth of the screen is going to be 480. 270. Um, so let's scale everybody up to 50. 
Um, and then uh, three fourths of the screen is going to be fourteen forty. And then um, three fourths down is going to be what is it? Eight fifteen? Yeah, eight fifteen. Wait, no, it might be eight ten. Hold on, let me. Yeah, it's eight ten. Um, and then fourteen forty, eight ten. So if you write these numbers down, um, four eighty two seventy, or even just save each of these as a preset, um, it's a really fast way. Instead of you know, instead of scaling stuff down and then moving them over as we normally would. Knowing these coordinates for basically the like uh fifty percent scale positions, if you just save these as presets or write these numbers down four eighty two seventy fourteen forty eight ten it's gonna be really easy to do frame ups like this um and then if you're doing a three up, all you have to do is just put the bottom one at 960, which is the center, and then you have a three up. Um, so I would highly suggest just writing those numbers down or saving presets so that, you know, a lot of times with these, with these double wides, because we have a full res webcam, it's a lot easier to, um, to do these frame ups with multiple cameras. Um, and then another thing you can do uh, is, let's delete two, two of these. Um, if you go one of them, you got 480, and then halfway is 540, make that 100, and then make the crop um, 25. And then you can take uh, the other one, 1440, which is the 3 fourths, uh, 540, 100, and then you have a side by side. Boom. Side by side. Well, Alana's looks like shit, but, um, so knowing these coordinates, you know, or just writing them down to have as references, it makes it really fast and really easy to do these, um, to do these different kind of frame ups, whether it's a four up, a three up, or a two up. Knowing these coordinates expedites, is it expedites? expedites expedites that process so much and so for me when i got my everything cut to time and then i'm going through and doing all the camera work knowing these numbers um and it, since everything is dimensional it's just 12 and a half or 25 for the cropping it's so fast doing the, these frameworks and i can just blast through my multicam um so it's really great to know in my opinion um and then once you're done all you got to do with that preset webcam corner and it's back to normal toggle that crop on boom and then you're back to basics baby um so that's basically <laughs> it <laughs> um there's two other things um one is i mean you obviously you're gonna Right click. I don't know if you guys know about this. You can select all the audio. Right click to edit it. Edit in Adobe Audition. You do want to have Adobe Audition open before you do this. Um, if you don't, it won't open all the files. Uh, but if you do, it will basically yeah. render them out and open all of the files in Audition. And then you can um, not only adjust them, but it also creates a new file so it doesn't affect the original. Um, the other thing is I would suggest doing that same thing for gameplay audio because um, this is something, another thing where it just differs computer by computer and there's not really a fix for it. Computers output sound at different levels. So you're going to have some people's gameplays where the audio is really loud and other people's gameplays where the audio is really quiet. So I would highly suggest selecting all the audio edit in Adobe Audition, and then basically just, in Audition, there is a, there's like a little slider you can use. Um, let's open a random file. There's this little thing right here. All you have to do is just click that and drag it to the right or left, 
and you'll see it basically like raise these up and down once this is loaded if we just clicking here you just raise it up and down and so for the gameplay it's not super important usually i just look to like one sixth or negative six and then i'll just drag them so that they're around there that's all you got to do super simple i would just suggest doing that for gameplay audio just so that when you're switching between the different perspectives you're not getting a music track that's you know getting really loud and then getting really quiet um the last thing well, damn yours goes that fast what do you mean what so audition? You, uh, it takes my computer like 15 minutes to open up all these files in audition oh well yeah yeah mine mine takes longer i just open this is just a dude soup audio track i just opened a random track normally when i oh, yeah when okay. i select all of the audio tracks it'll take like five ten minutes um okay all right so one other thing and this is not super important unless you're playing unless they're playing like a first person shooter with gunshots and stuff um and it'll also depend on the quality of the game's servers like with fallout this is fallout 76 it's known for being really shitty and for there being delays and everything so when someone does something like say when james fires his gun it's going to show up on all of our screens at different times, super delayed. Um, so you may, you may see it in your multicam. You'll see someone fires a gun and then it will like, it will blink, 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 blink on other people's perspectives. Some games, that's just how it's going to be like the fallout 76. That's just how it's going to be. But say you're editing, uh, like is doing the co-op adventures CSGO has really good um, servers, so most of that stuff, there's very little delay. Um, so if you find that things are off, all you have to do is basically find a point where, say, a loud noise happens, like, for instance, a gunshot. Um, and you can just do that same thing uh, where, because we have it inside of a multicam sequence, you only got to do it once. Um, you just find the gunshot, and you just line up that gunshot uh, with everyone's tracks. Um, but really, I found this is very optional. It only matters with games that are like super intense and super fast. With most multicams we're doing, it's really not going to matter. And you know, if the if the gameplays are off by you know a couple frames here and there, really not going to matter. Um, but yeah, that's basically it. Um, I would highly suggest, you know, putting the webcam up in the corner before you do any edits, but say you didn't do that, um, and you have a bunch of cuts, this is another thing where like, all you got to do, well, one, if you have a preset made, you just select all of the webcams, click and drag the preset down and it's going to apply it to all of them. But also... You change one of them. Oops. Um, and then you click on motion and you just copy control C and select all the others. Control paste. It will apply it to all of the selected files. So fear not. Um, yeah. Are there any other questions? Um, I feel like I went over most of my stuff. Um, but basically, like, uh, yeah, go uh, for it. Uh, yeah, I, I was just going to see if, if you could go back to that uh, uh, making a couple cuts with the multi, like, like, like w w when you're going through it, you watching the multicam, doing a couple cuts, and then just seeing yeah, how so, you're viewing that. Yeah, so it's like, doo doo doo. I'm watching it down. I got mine. Okay, okay where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Friends, Where's friends. Um, so I know Ryan, you like to edit, uh, in a single cam camera view. So it, the multicam will be kind of harder to, uh, to view. If you have two monitors, right. What I, you know, what I'll do is I'll drag it over to the other monitor and have it full screen. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so it's like, Oh, this is a cool thing that Alana did. So I just go E and then drag to like where it happens R and then X. Uh, and that so that's basically mark in mark out extract um, extract is right here in sequence and mark in mark out but, 
And, and, and that's you taking out the parts you don't want. Yeah, that's you taking out the parts you don't want. Um, so okay. it's like, okay, the cool thing on it did stops here. So I'm going to put an in there. And then do to do. I'm watching it down. Okay, Lindsay's doing a great response there. I'm going to scrub to where her response starts. Doing out. Extract. No, there's not. Okay, so no, there's not. That's where Lindsay's response ends. So I'm gonna do R or E, and then I keep watching it down. Is that you? Is that you? And and this is boring. NPC, oh my god, this is. Okay, that's an NPC. That's something I want to keep. NPC, oh my god, that's. So then I scrub to where it starts. Press R, extract. That's an NPC. Oh my god, this is my first NPC. So what I'll do, because I I know I know some of you like to basically edit linearly like you'll do the cuts and the camera work and everything like at the same time so that once you reach the end of your timeline you have a full edit i don't do it that way what i do is i go through and i oh and God. i just do cutting to time so basically i'll do one watch down of everything so i know everything that's in it and then I'll do a basic, just a trimming of fat, taking out all the stuff that I know isn't interesting, just watching oh, it geez, down, and then doing Spoiler. in, okay. out, extract, you know, extract, you right. just cutting out large swathes of stuff. And then I'll go through, and I'll actually cut to time, where I'll, you know, I'll be zooming in, and I'll actually do, like, frame, to the frame, oh, my computer. And and oh, when you, and I and, crashed Premiere. Uh, so then and, after and, after that third pass of cutting actually to time, oh, then God. I will turn the <laughs> multicam off. I'll turn the multicam off, um, and then I'll actually go through and do all of the camera work where I'm pressing the numpad or like the numbers one two three four, switching the cameras up. Got it. So 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 you're waiting till the end, and, and you're kind of just oh. like 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 by memory, uh, uh, being like, oh, I I I isolated this because of Lindsay's laugh or whatever. Like like that's kind of all. You're kind of going back into your mind at that point. Yeah, and I mean, once you have it cut down to twelve, fifteen minutes, it like really doesn't take much to remember. Like once you hear it again, and once you see it again, it's like, oh yeah, like, right. this is what happens. Uh, okay, yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm the same way a lot of times. So it's just interesting that you, uh, you don't do any yeah. uh, so, uh, camera. So, Ryan, if you're the interested, end. the way the way I'll do it is I'll go through and just multicam the whole thing, picking my cameras, and then uh -huh. come out of the multicam view where I just have the single cam, and then I'll do a cut down so that I'm not God. having to remember what part is what. I've like already focused on the parts that are interesting and then I can yeah. cut yeah. from there. But but you're also doing the thing where you are seeing everything happening at once so that you know you're not missing. Yeah. Just the one time, the first the first time I watch it, I'll do that where I'm selecting the cameras in the multicam view and then I get rid of that multicam view on my yeah. all the other passes I do. And, and 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 even when you're watching it in that view, you can be select, selecting cameras, it just doesn't isolate uh cuz you're watching the multi or, or uh, you don't see any different. Cool. So, uh, the reason I don't know you you cut out too much when you're asking that question. I couldn't understand it. Um, oh no. I, okay. Yeah. Sorry. I, was I understand confirming. everyone has their own processes, but I will give you the reason of why I do it that way. Um, I did like six years assistant editing, um, and I found it's it's much faster. Over time, you save seconds every time you do it, and then that adds up to minutes, you know, and then over the course of multiple projects, adds up to hours. Rather than doing steps one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, doing steps one, 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 one doing all steps one, and then all steps two, all steps three, and all steps four, it's much faster um, over time. You know, it doesn't. It may not seem faster when you're in it, but you are going to save seconds, and then minutes, and then hours. Um, so that's why I do just a cut down, and then a another cut down to time, and then I go in and I do all my camera work at the very end. Um, that's why I do it. But I understand everyone has their own process, and really, you know, if it works for you, it works for you. Um, but that's that's my reasoning behind it. That's why I choose.
Um, are there any other questions? 